All right, so a uh, little bit on the <coughs> event that took place in Oxford, Mississippi, uh, at the University of Mississippi, that demonstrates the extent to which Kennedy's policy of kind of trying to negotiate with Southern politicians, Southern racist politicians, rather than send in federal troops to enforce the constitutional rights of black people, why his um, <coughs> policy, his moderate policy is a failure, okay? It also rounds the um, uh, attempt, or at the successful ultimately attempt of James Meredith to enroll in the University of Mississippi, right? He's a, a black man who wants to enroll in the University of Mississippi. He has the support of the federal courts, of course, thanks to Brown versus Board of Education and, all the, and the, uh, other rulings surrounding it, right? The end of segregation. And, um, <clears throat> you know, this is a very brave thing to do in Mississippi, right? Um, <clears throat> all right. Well, um, so it's similar to what, y y you know, you had in Little Rock with the attempt to integrate Central High School, all right? Ultimately. What happens is the governor of Mississippi, Barnett, is says he's going to defy federal law and he's claiming, you know, states' rights or some nonsense. Um, <clears throat> why is that nonsense? Well, because um, the, or you go all the way back to like 1803 with the ruling that says federal law trumps state law. So on a constitutional level, there's, there's no such thing as state sovereignty. And then, you, 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 you know, you, you're also dealing here with the 14th Amendment, which says that, you know, all citizens are equal, have to be treated equally. So there's that, that's the reinforcing. So, the, so on a constitutional legal level, there's no legs to stand on. And of course, on a moral level, there's no legs to stand on, right? Like all men are created equal in the image of God. And so they deserve equal, you know, equal treatment and fair treatment and respect. So this whole state's rights argument is nonsense. Just internalize that, please, please. I'm usually not, but that's, okay, here we go. So uh, look, <clears throat> but, here's, but here's Governor Barnett up here saying, a whole bunch of insane things about how, um, you know, segregationists are like under attack or whatever it is. He's in, in a, anyway, <clears throat> he's going to oppose James Meredith enrolling in the University of Mississippi. All right. That's the point. But he's also then uh, like getting the crowd to like mobilize and like frenzied behavior. So what you have on the night before James Meredith is supposed to enroll at 7.30 p.m., you have this crowd of white students and citizens gathering outside of Miss, uh, in, within the ca campus of the University of Mississippi, and they're getting like frenzied into violence, right? Okay, they're ready to like, whatever. And the, um, <clears throat> okay, so that's happening. Well, what is the Kennedy administration doing about all this? Well, the Kennedy administration has been the, trying to negotiate with Barnett as it, you know, that's its policy, right? Well, <clears throat> Kennedy, so Kennedy's like, um, uh, he he gives, he says they will uh, they will count on Barnett to use local authorities, the Mississippi Highway Patrol, to <clears throat> enforce order on the campus so that they don't have to have a too heavy of a federal presence. So you only have about five hundred federal marshals on the campus who are there to you know <clears throat> try to enforce order, right? And that may not sound like very many, but if this mob is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. 500 marshals isn't going to be able to stand up against thousands of people. I don't know how many people were in the mob, but the mob was much, much larger than 500, the 500 federal marshals, from what I understand. All right. So now the Kennedys do have the, the army on reserve. They've got 5,000 troops in Memphis standing by to drive down to Oxford if necessary. It's like an hour drive, a little bit over an hour drive away from Memphis to Oxford. Okay. So <clears throat> Oxford's in the north of Mississippi. Uh, all right, look. Okay, so look. So <clears throat> what happens here <laughs> is that the um, the federal the, the the federal marshals basically uh, are under siege from the mob. All right. <clears throat> so you know uh, the the mob starts to throw bricks, and then they they're throwing Molotov cocktails like homemade bombs at the federal marshals. Okay. And then, uh, so you get eight marshals who are injured, and then the, the federal marshals start to retaliate and hold the mob off with tear gas, okay? Then the Mississippi Highway Patrol, who's supposed to control the mob, leaves, they leave, they go, they just forget it, we're not, and so the mob then goes crazy, 
and and the the, tr the federal marshals are trying to like hold them back, whatever. And there's gunshots ringing out in the night. Okay, <clears throat> and so 10 p.m. Finally, the federal marshals they're like under siege here. And Robert F. Kennedy, the Attorney General, finally calls, makes the call to Memphis to say, send some federal troops down there to Oxford to relieve the federal marshals, okay? The first wave of 5,000 uh, troops on reserve, uh, army troops and reserve in Memphis to go down and restore order. Well, they don't, for whatever reason, it takes them like six hours to get there. It's only like an hour drive, a little bit more. Well, it takes them forever to get there. They don't get there until like two in the morning, okay? By that time... Two people have been killed. Bystanders have been killed. The federal marshals are out of tear gas. 160 people have been injured, 28 of them by gunfire. It's a complete riot, complete chaos, okay? The troops come in, though, 2 in the morning. They restore order. Meredith comes in a few hours later. He's uh, able to enroll because he has the protection of federal army troops, okay? And... <clears throat> This brave, brave man finishes out the year, uh, the, the 1962 to 1963 school year uh, <clears throat> at the University of Mississippi and graduates under the protection of federal troops. So the same way that the um, <clears throat> students in Little Rock, when they integrated Central High School, had to have federal troops protecting them the entire year. James Meredith has federal troops protecting him that entire year. All right. So <clears throat> the whole thing just shows how ineffective Kennedy's attempts to negotiate with southern <coughs> southern politicians are the moderate positions are, are not going to work out okay and uh what's going to happen is that in 1963 going into 1963 <coughs> going into 1963 you're going to have uh martin luther king jr who is going to be organizing <coughs> a um very determined very brave resistance to the uh segregation laws in birmingham alabama and standing up and defying those laws and getting put in jail and <clears throat> getting a lot of people, young people, older people involved in this <clears throat> defiance of the segregation laws in the South. And the reaction of um, <clears throat> the police in Birmingham, Alabama is going to be really grotesque. And what's going to happen is the the protesters are going to be getting attacked by police dogs. They're going to be getting attacked by fire hoses. Police are going to be beating people. Um, and you're, you're dealing here with people who are getting attacked, who are young people, children, who are involved in the protests in Birmingham. And all of it's going to be on television, okay? And what it's going to do is the images of the people getting attacked brutally in Birmingham, Alabama, by the white supremacists. So the white supremacists attacking the protesters in Birmingham. What this is going to do is it's going to force the rest of the country to wake up. It's going to force the white moderates to recognize exactly how serious the situation is in the South. When they see the attacks on television, they can't hide from it anymore, right? And <clears throat> so, look, that's it. I mean, um, the, the, the white moderates, including John F. Kennedy, are not going to be able to maintain their moderate positions. They're going to have to take a stronger position on civil rights. It's going to become more of a national issue. And <clears throat> the majority of Americans are, for the first time, going to have to confront exactly how evil white supremacy is in the South. Okay, they've been neglecting it for a long time, hiding from it, not looking at it. Well, now they're going to have to look at it, and that's going to change things forever. And you know what? People need to do that. They need to face and look at the evil of abortion. I'm just going to say that because if they don't look at it, you got to look at it. It's evil. you got to understand what it is. It's the same thing with the segregation in the South. So long as it's kept under the table and you don't look at it, you can pretend it's not happening, it's not going to change, all right? But the turning point here is that um, <clears throat> the violence in Birmingham is going to be the turning point. We'll talk about that next week, all right? Bye.